announcement of the United Kingdom's new Tempest fighter project marks yet another new fighter program set to delivery in the 2030s. In addition to Tempest, a new Japanese fighter, a Franco-German project, and whatever China and Russia are surely working on, the United States has not one but two fighter jets. These two programs will probably stay separate and turn into separate planes thanks to the miserable experience of the F-35. A new article by Defense News breaks down what is known and unknown about the new two new fighters. The first is the Air Force's Penetrating Counter-Air. PCA is a long-range fighter meant to penetrate enemy air defense networks alongside heavy bombers, providing escort over enemy territory. This is a mission the F-35, conceived just a decade after the end of the Cold War, was never designed to do. It will take an aircraft with two engines and very long range. As Defense News points out, the plane that's born out of PCA may not even be a fighter jet in the conventional sense. The aircraft could be a fighter, or it could be a mothership for unmanned drones. It could be designed for dogfighting or it could rely on stealth and sensors to detect the enemy first and maneuver for a long-distance missile shot. The Air Force is trying to keep an open mind and let requirements dictate the design. The Air Force requested $147 million for PCA in 2018, $504 million in 2019, and according to Defense News that total will ramp up to $3.1 billion in 2022. PCA is expected to be operational in the 2030s. The concern is that the Air Force will be buying several major defense platforms at the time, including the F-35, TX Trainer, B-21 Heavy Bomber, and the ground-based strategic deterrent ballistic missile. By the 2030s, the Air Force will be purchasing 60 F-35s per year, which adds up to about $5.1 billion for the F-35 alone. How PCA fits in the budget is a good question. Meanwhile, the U.S. Navy is looking for a fighter to replace the F-A-18 Super Hornet down the road. Each Navy aircraft carrier is assigned four squadrons of fighters, and by 2030, carriers will deploy with a two squadrons of F-A-18 EF Super Hornets and two squadrons of F-35 CS. The hope is that by the 2030s, however, a new fighter, F-A-X-X, will replace the Super Hornets. There is remarkably little information out there for F-A-X-X, surprising considering the Navy originally wanted an in-service date of 2030. That fielding date now appears unlikely. F-A-X-X could be a manned, unmanned, or optionally manned aircraft. The Navy also will want a twin-engine long-range fighter that can operate beyond the range of land-based weapons such as the DF-21 and DF-26 long-range anti-ship ballistic missiles. While the Air Force's PCA will probably go more in the direction of an air superiority fighter with some air-to-ground capability, the F-A-X-X will probably be equally capable against air, ground, and sea threats. Like the Air Force, the Navy is keeping its options open. Could the two services collaborate on a common fighter to save costs? It's extremely unlikely. The two services probably will settle on different priorities that demand separate planes. More importantly, the services must avoid repeating the mistakes of the F-35, where the desire to simplify the process by making a single fighter to replace the F-16, A-10, F-A-18C Hornet, and Harrier actually made the program more complicated, drove up costs, and pushed back the delivery date. PCA and F-A-20 may use some of the same technologies, including the same engine, but will almost certainly be different planes.